Good evening, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to my TV. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for brand new content. Today, we're going to talk about Andrew Jordan, a.k.a. Scud Dugler. Now, a lot of y'all know he was signed to No Limit in print in the late 90s. You know, he did songs and he associated with Master PC Murder, Silk the Shock, Amir X, Snoop Dogg, Fiend, and Mystical, just to name a few. And, uh... He was signed to No Limit Priority and Tommy Boy. Skull Dugley made his first appearance on No Limit uh, 1995 compilation, Down South Hustlers. On the song entitled Dark Side, about a year later, Master P released a trailer on the Silk the Shocker first album, The Shocker promoting for Dugley's uh, up and coming album, you know, that was set to be released September 24th. Uh, 1996, but the release was pushed forward a week later, and Scott Dugley released Hooklin' for Life October 1st, uh, 1996. But the album uh, did, didn't do good. It failed to do well. It peaked 29 on the uh, top R&B, hip-hop albums and eight on the hot top hot sinkers. The next album, These Wicked Streets, did a lot better. It did 21 uh, on the top 204 on the top uh, rap and R&B albums. So, you know, after that, he left. You know what I'm saying? No Limit in 99 and started his own independent thing. You know what I'm saying? Because he left around the same time Fiend did. Skull Dugley Fiend. And David Banner got it on a chitlin' circuit together, and they was working their albums and stuff from Baton Rouge through Mississippi to uh, Pensacola, where they would link up with uh, Roy Jones and stuff like that. But you know what I'm saying? Them boys was uh, grinding. Mr. Magic was with them, too. So it was them folk. It was Magic, uh, Skull Dugley, Fiend, and David Banner, at first, you know what I'm saying? They was grinding that chitlin' circuit, man. And, you know, that uh, third world step was sold like 200000 independently, you know what I'm saying, in 2003. But, you know, in 2009, Scott Douglas got arrested by the police in Baton Rouge when they uh, came into his house and they found some child pornography videos on his computer and he had a uh two three two two three rifle and then he had a uh a forty. He had a Glock forty and uh you know what I'm saying and he was smoking marijuana and he got sentenced to six years but to this day man he said he was framed, he was set up, you know what I'm saying, by I think it was a girlfriend or something like that. And they had went on his computer man and found some violent kitty porn but i don't know how he can explain the kitty porn part but he still had a lot of money he had a good lawyer because back then you know he was uh working those uh them the distrib dist distributors and stuff you know with the little cds so he gonna drop ten thousand cds off and he'll come back with like you know, ten grand and sh stuff like that, you know, off ten thousand CDs. So he had a lot of money. So he paid for a good lawyer. Got six years. He out. You know what I'm saying? He on the sexual predator list. Uh, P won't call him. Do no work. Nobody that he had uh, any dealings with won't want to be anywhere around the dude. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he got a catalog out this world because he was working with uh, C-Lo Camp, Maximilian, uh, B-Lo. He was working with uh, Mystical. He was working with pretty much everybody that left New Orleans and uh, went to Baton Rouge that was down with either uh, Cash Money or uh, No Limit Records. And then he was messing with a lot of them cats from concentration camp and uh, body head entertainment. You know what I'm saying? And him and Chopper is real good friends. You know what I'm saying? But 
He just got a raw end of the deal, man. Nobody don't know really what happened, man, the hoodlum from life. But the police did find kitty porn in his computer, man, and he did do six years, and he got peace. I'm out.